So is this a new USB logo? So what we've just introduced is a new USB charger logo. And the nice thing about the new charger logo is for all the new type C chargers, you'll be able to actually understand how much power you're getting. It's built right into the logo. It gives you just like a light bulb model. Very simple. The more watts, the more power the charger can support, the larger devices it can charge. Or the faster it can charge. Is there a... If your laptop needs less... Is there safety is not going to burn Correct. This, the new USB charging uses a power delivery protocol which negotiates the proper charging model between the notebook and the charger or between the phone and the charger, whatever kind of product you're charging. And it's all done with a very elegant protocol that takes care of all the safety issues and compatibility issues. And if you are trying to charge something that needs more power, it's still going to charge it slower, right? Correct. The chargers are always work backward compatibility to the original USB. But it clearly, if you have a newer product that can use the new protocol, it can take advantage of the charger and get the higher performance. We're also introducing what will soon be a fast charger. So where it says charger right now, you'll be able to get one that says fast charger. And in that case, what you're going to be getting is the enhanced phone charging algorithms, where now you can charge your phone in a matter of minutes, because the phone can control very closely the charger's capability for current voltage very dynamically. And now they'll be able to use a standards-based charging method rather than a number of proprietary methods. So one charger, right. So now, we expect to see the big companies like Apple and Samsung and Huawei eventually to all move to a standards-based charging based on USB fast charging. And it's just one type of fast or there will be several type different fast? Because maybe somebody comes the, up with something even faster. Well, what's really cool is what they're doing is they're controlling the voltage and current to their own design profile. So each manufacturer can be innovative in what he's asking the charger to do, but the charger can just adapt to whatever he needs. Because essentially he has a fine grain control over voltage and current, and whether it does you know, current limiting or not, or whether it dynamically just adjusts voltages right in the charger for you. So what's really cool is each vendor can still innovate on his battery technology and protocol, but one charger does all that. It's future-proof, though. Yeah. It is. It's effectively future-proof. So the OEM can change battery technology and then choose to use a completely different charging curve and profile. Could it just update the firmware and optimize things in terms of charging speed? Correct. In the phone, even the chargers are full programmable. So the chargers, a lot of them have firmware. They'll be able to update the firmware of the charger as well. Is it scary to update USB firmware? There's security capabilities Have you built done in. That before? Um, yeah. How but, did you update before the USB? Uh, well, some of the proprietary vendors used USB to update their firmware. So, like uh, and, Intel or somebody with a. No, the OEMs. The OEMs. Like Apple and those kinds of people. Like the USB controllers. No, no, no. They're upgrading like the firmware and the device. <laughs> how the device works. But. They, you know, they use encryption and yeah, they check some, so it's all like secure. Control. It's not something you and I can do. So what's the firmware going to do? Well, right now, these chargers are designed to a current version of our specification. As the specification evolves, they should be able to evolve the actual product that they already sold by upgrading its firmware. So if, they, if we define some new kind of profile, they'll be able to program it in to the charger. Oh, you know, get it over the air, goes to your phone, the phone talks to the charger, loads it in. If you want to color code the cables or something, uh, it's, I don't know, I'm just wondering because, let's say you're in an airplane, mm -hmm. how would you know that the cable that comes out of your seat is going to be a fast charger or not? Maybe there should be a standard the color. Like the blue was USB-3, right? Well, in, well, the, in this case, it's not the cable that's doing anything fancy. Right? The cable's a standard cable. Yeah. 
So this cable is the same cable no matter what. It's independent yeah. of the charger. Uh, on the phone, they could pop up and say, actually, you're fast right now. Right? Like they do. Some of the phones, they show an icon that says fast charging. Well, you, the protocol allows the phone manufacturer to communicate to the user everything that's going on. So yes, OE, you know, um, Android could choose to put up a nice display that says you're using so many watts, and they might even tell you, oh, by the way, your charger's only limited to this much power. If you go get a charger with the logo that has a larger value on it, I can give you a faster charging experience. What is so, the, so let's say there's a USB cable out of this one, right? Yeah. If I touch the, the tip, is there any risk that we're going to get a lot of electricity? USB, or it starts always low? It's always turned off. This yeah. socket, even when plugged into the wall, <laughs> is turned off until you actually connect two things together and they talk to Sends each other. Sends the current to it first. Yeah. So they first do a logical communication before it actually puts power of any level. So nobody's it. ever going to get an electric shock from not USB. Not on an open circuit like this. How about the cable? <laughs> Even at the end of an open cable, there's no power. No power. No power. That's awesome, right? Yeah. That's a great design. The old USB was always powered. Which old? What? Uh, standard A. Yeah. What point two, two well, point zero? The, this, this socket here is always on. That one's always on. This ah, one's always on. Yeah, that's Type C. Type C is a smart one. Okay. Yeah. All right, and uh, just to check some of the other stuff you were doing here, you, you show you some displays? So, Display what, stuff? Yeah, what we have here are phones that are showing use of DisplayPort alternate mode running over USB Type-C. Not only are the phones able to get power from the display, they're able to actually display uh, video, and they're able to run audio. In the case of the one on the far end of the table, it's actually running the keyboard, the mouse, you can plug a thumb drive in. One cable doing everything. Nice. So, in the case over there, you'll see that it's plugged into the wall, so we're powering the phone, okay? And then the phone is effectively using that keyboard and display like, and behaving like a PC. In this case, the phone is powering the monitor. That monitor has no power plugged in anywhere. The phone is actually able to run the monitor for a number of hours before it'll run out of power. We're currently estimating, based on what our experience is today, that this can run for two to three hours, this panel, and run display. Now, obviously over there, it's running forever because it's getting its power from the wall, right? So it's a different usage model. But, this but is this a is this the a, a, a thick client laptop? No, 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 that's just a keyboard display mouse with a battery. That's all it is. That's CHP laptop. It has no yeah, CPU at all. The one they launched for Windows Phone. Yeah. 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 For Windows oh, okay. Right. But it, it works fine for the Android too. Yeah. We're running it with an Android-based phone. Yeah. It, it, does, does the Razer phone have a desktop UI, or yes, it just okay. looks like a normal Android UI? Yeah, it's running an Android okay, UI. Basically. Yes. Here's more like a desktop UI right here. But it's, it this is Android desktop. And it's, it's a... Basically, it's a... So this is being a touchpad. In theory, you could also touch back if it was a touch. Yeah, in theory. Send some USB signals back. Yeah. So, you know, I can... But here is powering the display twice, like one way in like the computing and the, the power too. So it's like power. It's sending power and, it's also and display. Running right. the whole thing. Yeah. And you can. So how soon are these kind of displays going to come out? Yeah. This is my personal one. I bought this last summer. It's available. In oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is using DisplayPort alternate mode. And it's USB power delivery compatible. Do you think people use this with laptops? That's what I use it for. Yeah. So this is what I use at home when I'm working at home. I just plug one cable into my notebook and I've got a dual screen monitor. Nice. Okay. People could just use the folks too. I mean, at work, I got four monitors all running off one USB. Does it say but that? Oh two amps or something? This is um, 900 million. Yeah. 
So it's running about not quite five volts at 900 watts. That's not so much, right? No. That's like 4.7 watts. Is it in low brightness mode or? It's at 50% right now. Can you can we go up? It will still work? Yeah. So it's got a, you know, I've got the ability to program the. Yeah. Their UI is pretty exactly. simple. Same here. Yeah, we're good. We could, yeah. you know, crank it up. So you can see it's. It's gone up to uh, 0.99, almost. Yeah. Now it's a little higher. So anyway, yeah, it goes up and down. This monitor will range between 600 milliamps and about 1,200, 1,300 milliamps at absolutely full brightness. Yeah. 